Hi, my name is Joe Axel. I work for the Northwestern Indiana Regional Plan Commission as a water resource planner. Sorry we couldn't be together in person today for the science symposium, so we're going to go ahead and try this virtually. And the macroinvertebrates, they're not going to be found uh, uh, every square inch of the, the bottom of the river here. Uh, they are actually going to be kind of uh, distributed uh, throughout this stretch on different uh, in different habitat types and uh, different flows, macroinvertebrates uh, uh, are basically they follow a uh, patchy distribution uh, 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 throughout the river, which is not uh, uncommon. Different types of have uh, macroinvertebrates have different preferences for the types of uh, habitat. Uh, and flows that they like to live in. Uh, some of the key areas that we want to make sure that we sample with our sweet nut uh, are going to be sampling uh, piece, pieces of wood or woody debris uh, within the river. We want to make sure that we sample uh, uh, little rocky uh, shallow areas and the water's flowing across. These are typically going to be very uh, diverse uh, macroinvertebrate communities. Uh, in the, these habitats, these riffle habitats. Uh, but as I kind of mentioned earlier, not all of our streams here in Northwest Indiana uh, uh, have riffle habitats. So that's where woody debris becomes really important. Other factors that we want to consider uh, when sampling the stream is that we want to make sure that we uh, collect from different uh, flow types uh, within the river. We want to hit some of those really slow flowing areas, uh, maybe next to the stream bank and where it's shallow, to areas where the stream flows a little bit swifter, but still over uh, shallow areas. And then kind of moving out a little bit further where it's the water flow is still pretty, pretty good but becomes a little bit deeper. And then we want to hit uh, uh, as safely as we possibly can uh, uh, some of the deeper areas where the water flows are slow. We want to do this uh, uh, within our entire 200 foot reach. Okay, this is kind of what our sweep net looks like uh, uh, once it's in the water. Uh, I've got the bottom of the net firmly pressed uh, uh, to the uh, substrate or the uh, bottom of the stream. And you can see that the flow of the water uh, is moving from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen. And it is also opening up my uh, uh, sweep net. So what I can go ahead and do in an area like this where I've got uh, shallow, faster moving water is I can use my feet. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to do this and kick the area in front of the net with my foot and what it's going to do is it's going to displace sediment and rocks and hopefully some macroinvertebrates uh, that were sitting on the bottom and those are going to be carried and trapped inside the net and I can lift that up and then I can sort through that sample to see what I find in there. Just kind of one thing to kind of note for today, it is still very much so uh, early in the season. Uh, I'm not expecting to see a whole lot because the water is still uh, very cold. Uh, the later we get into spring here as the water warms up, uh, we'll start to see more macroinvertebrates. Uh, what winds up happening during the winter time, macroinvertebrates have two options. They can either kind of uh, get through the season as eggs uh, and hatch a little bit later on as uh, water conditions warm up, or they can kind of hunker in place as adults in low flow areas. But right now, uh, most individuals that we're gonna see are probably gonna be really tiny, but we're gonna try our best today. So what I wanna do now is go ahead and pick through the net, uh, go through the different uh, uh, material here, like the rocks and the plants and algae growing, growing on the bottom of the stream. I wanna sort through this net and try to pick out anything I see uh, moving. Uh, on here and go ahead and place it in our tub. Okay, so kind of like I thought, uh, didn't collect a whole bunch of uh, uh, different macroinvertebrates today. The, like I said, the water is still relatively uh, cold, uh, but uh, we did pick up a few things. Uh, I think most everybody knows what this guy is right over here in the uh, uh, lower right hand corner of the uh, uh, frame that is a crayfish who is now kind of on the move 
Got a smaller one there and one that is just a little bit bigger. Uh, trailing right behind him, there is another uh, uh, caddis fly. It looks like he is attached uh, to the crayfish right now with his little silk strand. Here's our caddis fly. Uh, swimming around. Now this is an interesting caddis fly. Uh, this one uh, is a, uh, a free living caddis fly. Some caddis flies actually build little uh, cases or houses that they carry around uh, uh, on their uh, abdomens or backs that they kind of tuck into like little tubes. Uh, it's like having a little uh, home that they carry with them uh, where they can hide from predators. Uh, this one isn't alive but uh, uh, this is a, uh, a clamshell. Uh, it happens to be actually a type of invasive, but they've been here for such a, a long time. They're nowhere near as prevalent as some of the ones in Lake Michigan. This is known as an Asian clam or a corbicula. It's a little white. It's kind of interesting. These little white uh, 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 spheres or whatever. Those are eggs of some sort. You can kind of see the yolk in the center. I don't know if those are fish eggs or what. But uh, it is that time of year where uh, uh, a lot of things are going to be, uh, eggs are going to be being laid and newborn are going to start hatching. Uh, there's another caddis fly over in there. I found some uh, black fly uh, larva. Uh, they kind of look like uh, the shape of a, a bowling pin. And they fasten themselves on the bottom of the stream. Uh, they would be what we would find in that shallower, swifter moving water. They have little fan like mouth parts that they uh, uh, filter out their food uh, uh, from the water column that the stream carries to them. As a little safety cord, they also produce a little silk strand uh, that they attach themselves to the bottom of the stream. Caddis fly going on along for a ride <laughs> on top of the crayfish. Usually I have to worry about the crayfish eating the stuff that I pick up uh, uh, from the stream. There's our little uh, isopod, also known as a sow bug, moving along. And there is something I wanted to show you all. That guy that was kind of wiggling there in the lower left hand corner of the uh, frame. Uh, that is actually a uh, midge larva. Uh, midges kind of almost look like, uh, as adults, they would look like a, uh, a mosquito, but uh, uh, they don't necessarily have that biting mouth part to uh, suck blood. One thing that's kind of interesting uh, about what we have in the sample here is that most of the little uh, macro invertebrates I have in the tub, with the exception of the clamshell, and the uh, crayfish. Uh, these are all the juveniles or, or young ones. As adults, a lot of macroinvertebrates, uh, they're terrestrial, uh, meaning they live out in open air uh, 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 like we do. So they're only spending a portion of their life uh, living within the stream or the water itself. The reason that we're able to use macroinvertebrates as indicators of stream health is because different types of macroinvertebrates have different tolerance levels to pollution and uh, a habitat. So uh, in general, what we have in the tub here, uh, I would say overall, uh, this based on the few things that are in here, it, it, this is a moderately healthy stream. Uh, it, it, it's not too bad. I mean, caddis flies are considered for the most part uh, a pretty decent indicator of water quality. Uh, some of the other ones in here, uh, uh, like the black fly uh, uh, larvae and the crayfish are, uh, you know, a little bit lower down. Uh, not quite as good at indicators of water quality and habitat, but overall not too bad. But Having sampled this site before, I know that we've collected some other uh, macroinvertebrates that are very good indicators of water quality. Uh, a couple of those include something called a uh, mayfly. Um, also live on the bottom. They require high amounts of oxygen dissolved in the water, uh, swift water flows uh, for many of them, and just really good habitats uh, as well. Uh, so we've seen those in the past here in the stream and also stoneflies uh, needing similar conditions to those of the mayfly. Uh, actually, the uh, uh, caddisflies, mayflies, and stoneflies are considered some of the best indicators of uh, water quality and habitat. So usually where you can find those 
uh, uh, you, you're, you're pretty far down the path on uh, uh, having a, 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 a healthy stream. But uh, kind of all in all, uh, not too bad, but uh, kind of what I was expecting for this early in the season. Well, that's going to wrap it up to, uh, for the day. Uh, thank you for joining me for this virtual uh, uh, stream tour and uh, uh, assessment. Uh, hopefully you all got something uh, out of this. Uh, I know I sure have because I've never done uh, 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 kind of a video before, at least doing like a... a, a I guess this is my first vlog. Uh, I guess even uh, Attenborough had to start off somewhere uh, before he started doing a series like Planet Earth and the like. So uh, thanks again uh, for more information. Uh, if I piqued your interest at least uh, today, I would definitely encourage you all to check out uh, the Hoosier River Watch program. Uh, just use your internet search of choice. Uh, uh, type in Hoosier River Watch. Uh, should take you to uh, Department of Environmental Management. Management uh, uh, webpage, and from there you can find a, about a whole bunch of information uh, about the statewide program as a whole, and take a little bit of a, a, a deeper dive. So, uh, thanks again. Uh, once again, my name is Joe Exel with the Northwestern Indiana Regional Planning Commission. Hope to see you out in the water soon. Thanks. Bye.